Hi, in this video, we will present our paper titled Groupwise Contrastive Bottleneck for Weekly Supervised Visual Representation Learning. We explore the use of weak labels as a cost-effective solution to the problem of visual representation learning. Weak labels are defined as labels that are imprecise or incomplete. For example, in the context of bird species classification, weak labels can be in the form of wing color, which provides an incomplete description for the bird species. Compared to the actual fine grain labels, weak labels are considerably cheaper to acquire, as it depends less on domain-specific knowledge. They can provide useful training signals for learning better visual representation, especially in scenarios where the number of fine grain labels is limited. Our work is motivated by the semantic grouping of weak labels. Certain labels share a common semantic group, which can be utilized for visual representation learning. For instance, the labels blue wing and red wing can be grouped under the same semantic group of wing color. To model this semantic grouping of big labels, we propose a group-wise contrastive bottleneck module, which projects an image into multiple representational subspaces. Within each subspace, group-specific features are learned by maximizing the agreement between pairs of images that share the same big labels in the specific semantic group. As an illustration, consider the toy dataset with five samples each label with two groups of weak labels, the color and shape attributes. Their feature representation are projected into two subspaces. In the color subspace, the samples X1 and X5 forms a positive pair as they have the same color. However, in the shape subspace, they have different shapes, hence they form a negative pair and will be pushed away from each other by the contrastive loss function. We hypothesize that learning to model this relationship in a group-wise manner would lead to a better overall representation. Formally, the group-wise learning objective is given by equation 1 to 3, where equation 1 is the contrastive loss applied at the subspace level, and equation 2 is the sum of the losses from all subspaces. In addition, the contrastive losses are weighted by the entropy of each group computed from the training data, as given in equation 3. For more information on the specifics of the learning objective, please refer to our paper. On the right, we use two linear layers to project the image representation into a global projection vector, which is then disentangled by a set of group-specific linear layers into the corresponding subspaces. To encourage learning of augmentation invariant representations, we further propose a feature reconstruction objective, where the disentangled projection vectors are projected back to the image representation using the transpose weights of the projection layers. These reconstructed image representation are then encouraged to be consistent with the representation obtained by another copy of the input image through the mean square error loss given in equation 4. By combining and symmetrize the two learning objectives, we arrive at the overall loss function as given in equation 5. To evaluate the effectiveness and flexibility of the proposed method, we perform validation on public datasets under three task settings with three different types of weak annotations. This includes visual attributes, sensitivity attributes for fair representation learning, and hierarchical labels. In terms of performance in visual attribute learning, our approach attains the best overall performance in two out of our three datasets, with a substantial performance gain in the CUB dataset. Among the three datasets, the CUB dataset has the largest number of visual attributes of 312 attributes. The substantial performance gain in this dataset suggests that our proposed method is very effective in scaling to a large set of attributes. For the fair representation learning benchmark, by applying our group-wise learning objective to the skin type attributes, we were able to improve performance in underrepresented skin types without sacrificing the overall performance. Furthermore, we show that our approach can also be adapted to the hierarchical labor learning scenario. In the ImageNet 100 benchmark, our approach outperforms other baseline without modifying the learning objective. Finally, we conduct ablation study on the ImageNet 100 dataset to study the effectiveness of each proposed component. Particularly, the two most important components are the entropy weighting term used in the contrastive learning loss and the feature reconstruction loss. In summary, we introduce a pre-training framework for weekly supervised representation learning to leverage the semantic grouping information in the label space. We demonstrate that the proposed framework can be adapted to different task settings with different types of labor. Thank you for watching.